Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so that every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. Man, I want to bring this little quick story. It's kind of disturbing because I can't really respect, I can't understand everyone's way of thinking, especially if your complexion is the same as mine. You got people, let's just say, let me tell you a story. I work with a person <clears throat> who one day we're at work, um, everybody's talking, you know, everybody's in the middle of like congregating and whatever. Um, and this person was known to play this music, you know, in the work area, kind of loud. But, you know, I had to talk to him and tell him, you know, turn it down, this is too loud. You know, if I can hear it way back over here, it's gonna be kind of loud to these people. Everybody don't listen to the music. You know, it wasn't nothing real vulgar, but it was kind of, it was okay music, you know, for my generation. And, um, so, uh, we were all talking and I made a comment about the music that she, you know, <clears throat> that she played, you know, this music from like the late 90s. Matter of fact, it was from the, uh, it was a soundtrack to the movie Set It Off, okay? And um, I made a comment like, well, man, you know, you, you know, you should know that. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I made a reference to the music she listened to and you know, she didn't know, I guess a certain artist or something. And she said, you know, I said, well, dang, you know, you listening to this, you know, the set it off soundtrack. And she's like, what's that? And I'm like, you never heard it. You never heard it. I said, the music you listen to. They're like, what? You know, I said, the soundtrack. I said, the music is too. First thing out their mind, out their mouth was, well, I'm not black, so I don't know. And I'm looking like, what? And, you know, they said it one time in front of all our quote unquote customers or whatever. I don't know if they can hear her or not, but she got a, you know, <clears throat> voice cares. And this person said it again, while I'm trying to explain like the music, where it comes from, the movie. And they, and they said, they made the statement again that I'm not black, so I don't know. And like they said, I, like I told you, and they, they said it again, it's talking about it. like I told you, I'm not black, so it's like, and it got louder and it disturbed me. And then it hit the core and I, and I said, okay. And I just you know, said, okay, well, next time you get pulled over or next time you get harassed by them police or get harassed by them white folk, tell that to them and tell me how that works out for you. Because in this country, in a system of white supremacy, your nationality, your religious beliefs, it doesn't matter if you're Christian, if your religion is Bible, Bible based or Quran based or whatever. Now, you can't look a certain way and they will try to, you know, they may just say, you know, you are like uh you know a muslim it might you know make you you know bill you out to be an extremist or whatever and that can happen you know I, I see that but when you're like let's say my complexion or round about that complexion a little dark a little light or whatever they don't care what you call yourself it's about what they see. So when they get to redlining these neighborhoods so you can't live in certain neighborhoods, when they start discriminating against you to try to get jobs because of your name or how you look, when you can't, you know, can't get certain things or like I say, get pulled over or get, or walk into a store and they watching you, they following you, 
anymore. You know, you got your little kids in the store with you and they watching you like a hawk. But over here, the mother folk over there actually robbing the store blind. They don't care if your family is from Jamaica or the Dominican or Cuba or, 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 or Israel or South America or wherever the heck your your that you or the generation above you is from they do not care they look at you they don't care they don't even care of your sexual orientation unless you put it out there all this other stuff like i say your your religious preferences your sexual preferences the way you dress the way you act all that other stuff you can hide the one thing you cannot hide is your complexion so you need to stop and some people say you know and i've heard people say well you know they don't consider themselves black american because they're you know dominican or they're uh you know puerto rican or you know they're whatever whatever you know, you know salvador well whatever, whatever the case they're from i get that i understand that but see conversations like that those conversations are not the kind of kind of conversation you have in public not the conversation you have amongst us because when we look at you, we just see, you know, the same person, just you got a different accent or you from somewhere else. But we're part of the same struggle. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that struggle may be at the time, we're part of the same struggle when it comes to people in power because they look at us all, they look at all of us the same. So when you say that it hurts us, make us, you know, ups, may upset us, make us feel some type of way because it's like you're trying to because if you're not one of us, then who are you? Who are you trying to be associated with? You can't say you're being, and I mean like once when you're in this country, you can't say you're trying to be associated with people, let's say you're from Dominican Republic, right? Or let's say you can't be trying to associate yourself with people from the Dominican Republic because they don't run that here. They're not, they're not in power here. So, I mean, you can associate yourself with them, you know, move into the neighborhood, you know, try to build up, build, you know, businesses, schools, houses, a community, a true community. I can understand it, you know, trying to build like, you know, a uh, Dominican American community. I get it. I get it. But to just flat out say, hey, we just this and we're not black. You're not really helping yourself. Matter of fact, you could be hurting yourself and not even realize it. And then, you know, you could be hurting us as a whole because we're all trying to get from under this system and we can't do it when people are coming in and trying to divide us, trying to divide us like that amongst our enemies, amongst those who maybe, you know, trying to hold us down or whatever. So, I say that to say this. I'm, I get to this story here, and it's from uh, BET, and it says actress Gina Torres explains why she felt trapped being a Latina woman in African American role. The actress says she used a quote Jedi mind trick to overcome the challenge as a person of color in Hollywood. If y'all ain't seen Gina Torres, I remember her from, I think I love my wife and maybe other roles. I, they may, they may, they may talk about them in this little article or whatever. That's why I remember her from. Didn't know she was, you know, Latina or whatever the case may be. But even if she was, even if she wasn't, I didn't care. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I didn't care. What's, what, what her nationality was? Good actress, played the role well. You know, did what she had to do. But she, from this statement, and maybe she'll come back with come out with a rebuttal. But she made it seem like it's a a negative thing to have to play African American roles. Afro Latina actress Jenna Torres is opening up about her struggles in Hollywood, how she often felt pigeonholed when it came to the kind of role she was offered. The Bronx native, who was the daughter of Cuban parents, said that an act, as an actress, she felt 
like she had, quote, no place, unquote, in Hollywood world, in the Hollywood world in a conversation with Suggest. Quote, there is, there was no place for me as a Latina. And then as a black woman, I don't identify as a black woman because for me, it was cultural. Like I say, I get it. I've heard that. Because of course I present black, I am a black woman. I am also Cuban. So you're mad because they didn't recognize your culture, right? But yet you took them roles as a black woman because that's all they offer. You could have done any doggone thing you wanted to do. Matter of, because you didn't, nobody told you, nobody made you be an actress. You could have been a teacher. You could have got you a bank job. You could have did anything you want to. Could have came out here like us common folk and got you a job out here, got you a little nine to five, got you a little business, you know, corporate job, pay your taxes and go about your business. But your dream, I guess, your aspiration was to become an actress. Okay, if that's the case, then you gotta deal with what comes with it, period. Or make changes. Simple as that, make changes, uh, take the risk of being you know, ostracized in Hollywood and go on about your business, but you know, you become that change to help other Latina act actress, actors and actresses uh, get the role that you felt that you should have got. But I'll tell you what, down here in Texas, uh, you may not could have could have been in the, in the Hollywood world, but man, you know how many Spanish channels, you know what I'm saying, pop up on our TV? If you got regular TV, I mean, shoot, half the damn channels on uh, air TV out here. I don't know what you call it, antenna TV. Uh, or, 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 or Hispanic channels. You could have easily got on there. I mean, you look good enough, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you could have probably, and then you got, you know, you got a little Hollywood experience. You could have made a killing. You could have broke through and probably made a killing on them channels. But you wanted to be associated with them folks. That's the problem. She said, let me go back. There was no place for me as a Latina, and there's a black woman. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't identify as a black woman because for me it was cultural. Because of course I present black. I am a black woman. I am also a Cuban. She said, "When you, when you're here, and you in the United States, and they ask you to be in a box, and you don't fit into the box, culturally it was different. It was not one that I identified with. But to work and survive, it was something that I had to learn." You know, but to work, to survive, it was something that I had to learn. Exactly, man, that's how the world, man, bottom line, that's just how the world works. If you wanna make a living doing what you wanna do, sometimes you gotta do things that maybe you don't really too much agree with. Let's just say like in the field that I'm in, uh, let's say if I have some kind of religious preface in the medical field or religious beliefs about who knows, uh, let's say, uh, who knows, uh, shoot taking a vaccine or something who knows you know and who knows like religious preferences you know don't want to take a vaccine but then they say hey you got to take one because of this outbreak that just happened you gonna take it or you ain't gonna take it you hope for a, a, an, an exemption but if they don't have exemptions then what you gonna do if you work for the feds like the va or something they're gonna make you take that they're gonna make you take it if you don't take that vaccine then what you gonna do you're gonna, you're gonna they say you take it or get fired or quit, what you gonna do? And the VA could be the perfect job for you, man. They got great benefits, you know, retirement is like a sun gun. You, you, you worked that 20 something year retired in the VA, man, you set for life. You and your family set for life. What you gonna do? You gotta make a choice. You worked there for the VA for 25 years or 30 years, and then after that, you're gonna say, man, I had to take these vaccines, take these shots, and I hated it. I had to do something that I did not believe in, but in order to survive, to you know, to be able to pay bills, I had to do it. No, not necessarily. Sometimes you just gotta make changes because this is not your world. This is not your system. So you can get upset about it. But like I said before in other videos, it's about, this is what it is. You don't ask why, it's just, this is what it is. Now it's up to you to 
make changes. You either make changes or you live in it and you deal with the consequences. Nobody, very few people get to do everything they want to do. A lot of times people, your morals are always going to be tested one way or another. Let's see. A graduate from the LaGuardia High School of Music and Arts and Performing Arts made her first on-screen debut, debut in 1992. And if, a graduate from the LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts made her first on-screen debut in 1992 in an episode of Unnatural Pursuits. She also had roles in 911, Lone Star, Law and Order, Suits, Bones, Riverdale, and more. Like I said, I know her from uh, like a little small role in I Think I Love My Wife or whatever. For Torres, she practiced what she explained as a Jedi mind trick to fit in the industry when it came to accepting roles as a Latino woman. To then learn to be whatever black was and then feel like I was alienating that other part of myself, that Latina self she shares. To keep myself from being just sad all the time about not being able to fully experience and express the entirety of myself. The 53 year old will co-star, with next co-star in the Netflix, Netflix film romantic comedy feature, The Perfect Find alongside Gabrielle Union and Keith Powers. So this woman says she was sad all the time because she had to play the role of a black woman because she is Cuban. I wonder how them brothers that played the step and fetch roles back in the day felt. I wonder if they were sad all the time. I wonder if the lady who played, was it, what was her name? I can't think of it. Was it Bammy Harris or whatever that played Gone in Gone with the Wind? The black lady that played the maid in there and got her little old, you know, got her little old nomination award for like supporting actor, actress or whatever. I wonder if she felt sad having to play a dog on me maid in the antebellum South. I wonder how she felt. While her people, and while, you know, and step and fetch and while their people, and a little boy that played Buckwheat, while their people, us, ridiculed them, look at them like, man, y'all playing these, these roles that are making us look bad. But they in Hollywood doing what they feel need to do to survive. But it's like, it had to start somewhere. If this, if this is where you want to go, and that's, and that's what I'm gonna say about this, if, if, if if this is a life you want to choose, you have to accept what comes with it. If you want to play, what about Jackie Robinson playing baseball in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the majors? And, hell, he could, other teams, when he play, they didn't want to play against his team, wouldn't let him sleep in the same hotels, whatever, because, you know, for a black man to play in professional, you know, in, 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 in the white folks baseball league. I wonder how they, you know, how they feel. But again, if that's the role you, if that's the life, the life you want, if that's the road that you want to take, then you have to deal with what comes with it. You know, nobody forced you, forcing you to become an actress, um, uh, forcing you to become a nurse or a doctor forcing people to play sports. Nobody's forcing you to do anything, become a you know a computer engineer, a mechanic. Nobody's forcing you to do anything that you don't want to do. But when you choose a certain life, when you choose to do, when you choose to take on a certain profession, like I say, you have to deal with what comes with it. Now, the thing is, with you being, I guess, a Latina, you want to quote unquote, be a Latina act, actress or whatever. Shoot, be the, you know what I'm saying? Be the trailblazer. You can be the trailblazer. Don't sit there and look for sympathy because you got to deal with a society that everybody else has to deal with too. People that with, of, of your complexion has to deal with. Just, like I say, be a trendsetter. You got your little money, you know, you done made a few hundred thousand, maybe a few million, whatever, playing these roles. Do like everybody else do. You know, take your money, go back to your country, go back to Cuba, and start your own little production company. Build your studio. 
I know there are people like Robert Towns. I think he built, you know, he built his own studio. Uh, what's the guy? Oh, I can't think of his name. Remember, there used to be a show called Frank's Place. Uh, that brother built him a studio. Uh, uh, Tyler Perry built him a big studio. Build your studio and start your own production company and produce your own show here. YouTube now, and you can, with, with, with streaming, and you can uh, make all the. No, that was an Easter Ray. You can make all the shows and movies that you want in the in the comfort of your own home with a nice camera or iPhone and have you a studio built. And then just stream it on, you know what I'm saying, on, on, online. I mean, it's ways to, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's ways to make it happen. You just gotta have that get up and go to make it happen. You can't sit here and be, you know, boo-hoo, what was me? Cause I gotta deal with these racist people in this industry that I don't, I don't control. I don't own the movie rights. I don't own the scripts. I don't own the studios. I don't own the production companies. But now I'm on. A, I'm upset because I gotta deal with this unfair characterization that I have to that I have to play black roles. What kind of roles you want to play? That's the question I want. Now, like I said that's what upset me. Like, what, what did you want to do? What did you think should have been out there? Did you write scripts? Did you create your own scripts so you can and, and, and present them to the producers and then they shut you down? I mean, what was it? I, I that's 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 what that's that's what I want to know. Like, what exactly was the holder? What really held you back? That's because from what I'm saying, like I said, you just doing the same thing everybody else doing. Let's see, what is this story? I'm, I'm gonna suggest right now. And uh, they say the same thing. I feel like I was living in three worlds. Tori said while taking part in a round table discussion for MSNBC. There was my world that I grew up in, also Spanish speaking, in also Spanish speaking, home, Cuban parents. And then you go out into the world and I'm speaking English and I'm in the Bronx. And then going into this industry as an actress, then nobody recognized you that recognized you as either one. But she explained there was no place for me as a Latina, and then as a black woman, I didn't identify as a black woman because for me it was cultural. Like I said, I I, I kind of get that because of course I present black. I am a black woman. I am also a Cuban. I'm not sure how many Cuban roles you was gonna do. What well, if you just played a role of just being a woman? and you just happen to be black and or Cuban. I don't see you complaining about that. I don't see you complaining about, hey, I, I got a role that was probably created for a white woman and uh, I got that role and I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, dang, I, and I feel so bad about it. You said, no, I, you know, I had to play Chris Rock's wife and I had to be a black woman. I mean, you could, you, you might've could have said, hey, can I speak Spanish? I mean, did you ask him that? Could you speak a little Spanish in your in your role and show that you was Cuban so everybody could know it and you could play his wife, love wrench? He probably would have let you slide with that. I don't think, you know what I'm saying? I don't see that here. But it's worth survival. It's something that I had to learn. She's a Jedi mind trick. Uh, since the early days in Hollywood, Santa Torres has found her place in the industry and has carved out a place for herself as an Afro Latina. But there is definitely still work to be done in the industry. Torres is one of the many stars in the entertainment industry who are called for more diversity, who are calling for more diversity, and are speaking up about their own experiences in Hollywood. And that's how you do it, man. Like, so, you know, you go out there, you, you know what I'm saying, you make a name, you make your presence known, and let the world know, hey, uh, there's a lot of unfair stuff going around. Can we get more diversity? But again, instead of asking and begging for roles or jobs, or whatever, in whatever industry you in, create your own. Come together as a community, create your own. But that's all I got for this. Like I said, I, I mean, I don't know how much, like I said, it, it, it upset me because she said, you know, when people say that, come to this country and then say you don't identify as black, when you know that's what's gonna happen. But she was born in this country, but I don't know what she was looking for, but I think her point is she just want more probably just more roles as a woman of color and of Latin descent. She just want she just want a chance, you know, to be in more movies and be in shows. If that's the case, I mean, it is what it is. But tell me what you think about it. Am I being too sensitive about this, or do I got a point? 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe if I would move to Cuba and try to get into some some industry and uh, didn't get, you know, couldn't find the jobs I wanted because of the way I look, maybe I would feel the same way she feel. But the problem is you in this country. In this country, you have no control over what you do unless you create your own market. With that being said, hey, leave a comment below. Share it with the world. And I'll leave you in peace. And I'll see you on the other side.